Right, hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Caroline, and today we're gonna to be doing an accessible yoga flow um, that's going to be, we'll only need a chair and a mat. We want the chair to, preferably one with no arms, and preferably one that's a little more firm. If squishy chairs are all you have around, no worries. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started in just a comfortable seated position in your chair. We'll bring your palms face up on your thighs. And we'll start to sit taller. Ground under your sit bones and lift up through the front of your spine as you soften your shoulders down a little bit away from your ears. We'll take a few breaths here, breathing in through your nose and breathing out through your mouth. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. One more of these. We'll grab onto the sides of your chair. Sit up even taller, really press down through your hands and broaden through your chest. Feel your shoulder blades hug together on the back of the body. And lift your gaze up just a little bit towards the ceiling so we can take a little back bend, just a little arching back. Take a few breaths here. And slowly come back on up so you're sitting straight up, nice and tall. Bring your head to point forward. We'll keep your right hand on the chair and take your left hand on top of the head, and we'll just drop your head to the left. If it feels good, you can take your right arm out to the side and you can pull your fingers up towards the ceiling and get a little stretch through the forearms and the wrists all the way up to the neck. And remember if you feel any sort of tightness or discomfort, just Ease out of the pose a little bit and see if that makes it a little bit better. So spread your fingers and continue to breathe. We'll release that right and left hand down. Grab onto the chair with your left hand and use your right hand to pull the head over just slightly to the right. And remember, if it felt good on the other side, you can take your right, your left arm away and point the left fingers up towards the ceiling. We'll take one more big breath here. All right, we'll bring both hands to the chair, keep your head nice and straight, and we'll cross your left ankle on top of your right shin, just the right, um, kind of right above your ankle. If you have a little more mobility, you can bring that left ankle up to sit on top of the right knee, and to call this a figure four shape. So we want to actively press this knee kind of open to the left and down a little bit. And we'll press down through the chair with your hands. Lift up through the chest again. Keep your spine really long. And we'll fold in without trying to round your spine. Try to keep it all really long. You can bring your right hand to the bottom of your foot and your left hand to your knee for a little extra support. And if your ankle is crossed down here, we just want to focus on 
getting the spine to be kind of at this diagonal, at this angle. And we'll take one or two more breaths. And we'll inhale, slowly rise, and we'll switch sides. So you can cross the right ankle over the left ankle or bring it all the way up. You might notice a little tightness in one side of the body versus the other, and that's okay. We all have these little imbalances. It's just good to be aware of them, be mindful, and, and make sure that you're in no pain. You don't want to feel anything that's severely discomforting. And from here, we'll start to take your spine forward. Just getting a little stretch for stretching the piriformis muscle. It's kind of deep to the glute. And oftentimes this muscle can get really cranky on people, especially when we sit for long periods of time. And when we don't use our glutes very well, oftentimes this muscle can become really tight. One more breath. And we'll slowly rise up as you breathe in. And we'll exhale and release it down. Okay, so we're gonna take your arms out in front of you and we'll stretch your wrists. So take your right hand and pull your left fingers back. You wanna open the palm, open your thumb to the right side and take a few deep breaths here. Remember to sit nice and tall, feel your sit bones beneath you and stack your rib cage right over your pelvis. We'll switch sides. Use your left hand to pull your right fingers back and remember to keep the palm opening wide. It's always a good idea to stretch our wrists before we do any sort of weight bearing activities. Uh, it's just a good way to prepare them. We'll take one more breath here. Release your arms down. You can shake them out a little bit, roll out your wrists. And hear some creaks and pops, that's okay. <laughs> so from here, we're gonna start to engage the transverse abdominis muscle. It's this deep, deep core muscle that we all have. It's kind of underneath that six pack of abs that we all have. So we'll come to the, the edge of your chair. Sit nice and tall. You can use your hands onto the side to support you. And we'll just lift one knee and lower, lift the other knee and lower, and we'll start to find this, this kind of marching action. And you'll have to kind of pull the belly in. You'll notice that some of these hip flexors in the front of your hips are also helping. It's really, really good. We want to keep those hip flexors strong. And we're going to go for about 10 more of these. Try to keep the spine really long. If you want a little more of a challenge, you can reach your arms out to the side. We'll go for three, two, and last one. All right, that should be pretty good, pretty warmed up for, this, for the transverse abdominis muscle. So we're gonna go ahead and come on up to stand. We'll come to the back of your chair. It's definitely helpful to have your chair on some sort of sticky surface. Maybe it could even be a rug. We just don't want it to be on the hardwood floor because you might notice that it kind of um, moves around a little more than we would like. So we're gonna go ahead and bring both hands to your chair to the back. We'll step your right foot back and we'll step your left foot forward. And then we're gonna widen your stance. So take your right foot a little wider, maybe your left foot a little bit wider, so your feet are about as wide as your hips. We're gonna bend your left knee, and we're gonna rise up onto the ball of your right foot. So we just wanna get a little bit of a lunge going on. We don't have to get really deep into it. 
It's just really good to put this hip into extension, especially when we sit for long periods of time. I'm gonna keep this area opening. So if you feel good here, you can start to take the arms forward and up. And lightly squeeze the right glute. And you can bend this right knee just a little bit so you can kind of scoop and tuck your tailbone just slightly. We'll take two more breaths here. Breathing in and breathing out. Inhaling and exhale. Release your hands to the chair and we'll switch sides. So just step your right foot forward, left foot back. Bend your right knee and rise up onto the ball of the left foot. Remember, you can always stay here with your hands on the chair, or you can take your arms all the way up to the ceiling. Bend this back knee just a little bit so you can tuck your tailbone, keep the neck long, reach up through your ring fingers. Squeeze the left glute just enough so that you can start to feel a little more opening through the front of the left hip. One more breath. And we'll slowly release your hands. Okay, and we're going to switch it up. So we're going to step your right foot back to meet your left. And we're going to take kind of a, a more friendly version of downward facing dog. So we might need to walk your feet back just a little bit more. We want to bend your knees and press your hips back. So the goal here is to keep your spine as long as you can. So if you have a mirror or um, you know, a, a camera, you can always take a picture of yourself and see what your form is. The main goal here is we don't want to be rounding in the spine. Instead, we want to keep your spine really straight just kind of finding those natural S curves. And we want to send your hips back, so you might have to bend your knees to really reach back through the tailbone. But you might feel a nice stretch through the arms. And we also want to lift the armpits up away from the floor just a little bit. For this version of downward facing dog. We'll take just a few more breaths. Okay, to get out of this, we're going to rise up just a little bit and you can bring your hands onto your knees. And we're going to use your hands to help kind of lift you on up to a stand. We're going to do a little couple of squats. So keep your hands on your legs and just run them down your legs about as far as you can go. And then we'll keep the hands dragging on the legs all the way up until you come to stand. Bend your knees, send your hips back, hands come down the legs. Hands start to glide up the legs. Use your glutes to come all the way up to stand. We'll do this about four more times. This is really helping to work that hip hinge, kind of learning how to, it's almost like, um, like a door or something, you know, you don't, the door doesn't bend to get locked or, or, you know, closed. What's happening is it's just, you know, hinging and the door is staying nice and straight. Okay. We're going to come back to the, to grabbing onto the back of the chair. We'll start with your left hand on the chair and we'll do a couple of different balancing exercises. So first we'll lift the right knee up. And you want to think about this right knee as forming like a 90 degree angle. You can bring your right hand on top of your knee, but we're just gonna, like a pendulum, just let this right foot kind of wiggle from side to side but keep your knee as it is. We just want to feel this internal and external rotation of the upper thigh. 
kind of getting out some of these cobwebs, some you know, tight fascia, and we'll release the right foot down. We'll switch sides. Just bring your right hand to the chair. I'm just gonna move my chair so you guys can watch me. And left knee lifts up, and we'll just do those kind of wiggling motions. So as the foot goes away from the body, we find this internal rotation of the thigh, and as we bring the foot in towards the center, you feel an external rotation. Okay, and we will release that foot down. We're gonna go ahead and turn back towards your chair, and we'll find that downward dog again. So walk your feet back, Bend your knees and send your waist towards the wall behind you. Keep the spine really long. And just breathe here. We'll bring your hands onto your knees and use your hands to help you rise up. We'll step back a little bit closer to the chair and we'll bring your hands onto the back of the chair as you send your right toes back. This might be as far as you wanna go, but if you would like to go a little further, you can start to lift the right toes off the floor and start to press your chest down towards the floor. If you're feeling a little adventurous today, you can bring your hands into prayer, or you can keep them there on the chair. Bring this right foot down, and we'll send your left toes back, nice and tall through the chest. We'll start to lean forward, and maybe you can lift the left toes up a little bit higher, coming into warrior three. Stay here or bring your hands into prayer. Bring your hands back down to the chair, release your left foot, and we'll come on up to stand. We'll bring your right hand to the back of the chair and we're going to bring this knee, this left knee up in front of the chest. So from here, we're going to start to send your left leg back. And maybe you just tap it on the floor, just like that move we were doing, kind of that warrior three. And then we're going to rise back up, left knee to the chest. And then we'll fly this left leg back, kind of for a warrior three. One more time. Left knee up to the chest. Send it back. Tap. We'll come back up to stand. We'll switch sides, so bring your left hand to the chair as the right knee lifts up. Send your right leg straight back behind you, tap the toes on the floor, and rise up. Right knee in front of the chest. Send your right leg back, tap the toes. Last one. Right knee lifts, and we send it back. Tap and come on up to stand. You can dance it out, shake it out, whatever feels best. And we'll bring your feet as wide as your hips. Make sure your feet are pointing parallel to each other, and we'll just come to a nice mountain pose. Palms face forward, so we feel this external rotation of the upper arms, therefore we broaden through the chest. Spread your toes. Ground on through the four corners of your feet. And take a, maybe a moment if you want to close your eyes, you can close your eyes. Just feeling and connecting to your body, using this time to give back to yourself. and to take care of your vessel, of your body. Okay, we'll open your eyes slowly, 
And we're going to go ahead and have a seat back on your chair. Come to a comfortable seat in your chair, but make sure that you sit kind of near the edge. From here, we are just going to take your right shoulder up toward your ear and then roll it back. And then take your left shoulder up toward your ear and roll it back. And we'll roll the right shoulder back and the left kind of individually, one at a time. Really focus on this movement happening from your scapula, from the shoulder blade. That big bone, kind of off to the side, right by your upper arm. And if you want to get a little bigger, you can get the elbows involved and just roll out your shoulders, just getting these puppies mobilized. And we'll slowly release the arms. We'll inhale, circle the arms up to the ceiling. Grab onto opposite elbows. And if this is complicated or, or uncomfortable to you, you can keep the arms up as high as they'll go. And if that's right here, no, no problem. We just want to kind of get ourselves moving, get ourselves out of our Netflix and chill positions. <laughs> so as you come to the stretch, we want to focus on squeezing the shoulders up towards the ears. Feel that length that's created through the sides of the body, through the sides of the ribs, and breathe as wide as you can. Breathe into the low belly and the side of the ribs. Breathe out through your mouth. And release your arms. Inhale, lift the arms high up. And we'll bring your palms up to the ceiling. Spread your fingers. Keep everything really nice and strong if you can. We're just wanting to open up some of this fascia. One more breath. And exhale, release. We'll use your left hand to grab onto your chair and we'll take the right arm up to the ceiling. Full breath in and as you exhale, we'll arch to the left through a side stretch, just getting into the intercostals, these muscles that we have in between our ribs. We'll inhale, rise up, let the right arm come down and exhale and settle. Inhale, lift the left arm up and exhale to the right. We'll take two breaths here. Inhale, rise up and exhale, release. We're going to come onto the floor and if it's not accessible for you to get onto the floor, you can go onto a couch or onto a bed um, or you can do uh, a couple of different options. So, when you come onto the floor, we're gonna come into a bridge pose. And if you would rather do that in a chair, you can lean back and just imagine that you're starting to lift your hips off of the chair. This is gonna be, we just wanna get the glutes firing. But if you're able to, we'll come on down onto your back. Bend your knees and ground your feet. And the arms can just be down your mat. You can grab onto the outer edges of the mat and we'll come into bridge. So lift your hips just a couple of inches off the floor. We don't want to go into the fullest bridge pose. We just want to keep it kind of neutral. So tuck your tailbone, use your glutes here to assist you. And then you can imagine you're pulling your mat apart. You can stay here and breathe, or you can start to pulse the hips a little bit. Just lifting and lowering. And less is more. We don't have to bring the bum all the way to the floor. We just want to find these little pulses. We'll keep going for three, two, and one. And then lower down from the middle back all the way to the lower back, kind of segmentally. And relax. 
We'll take the bottoms of your palms, kind of the heel of the hand, into the creases of your hips. And from here, we're just going to press your thigh bone down and away and create a little more space through the abdomen. Finding this easefulness, this gentleness in your practice. We'll bring your knees up into your chest. You can just interlace your fingers over your shins. We'll take your arms wide to a T and then drop your knees to the right. Got a little bit of a spinal twist going on right now, but we're going to incorporate some really common PT exercises called open books. And these are really good for the thoracic spine and for kind of that middle chunk of spine right behind your ribs. So we'll bring your left hand up and over to meet the right hand. And then use your left hand to open and use your chin to follow the left hand. Take the left arm up to the ceiling and to the right hand. And then lift the left arm up and take it open. If your head is uncomfortable here, you can always use a pillow or a block or something to help give yourself a little more lift up. Or you can just, you know, as you move, kind of move your neck with you. We'll do three more of these. It feels so nice. Okay, we'll take a breath here to enjoy this spinal twist. And then we'll lift your knees back up to center and then drop them to the left. Keep the arms open wide. And we'll get ready for your open books. So we'll take the right hand up to the ceiling and to the left hand. And remember to follow with your head. Really feeling that openness come from right behind the ribs. Okay, and we'll do just one more. And take a big breath. We'll pull your knees back into the chest. Take a moment to pause here. Point your toes. Keep your knees hugging in. Big breath in and big breath out. We'll roll over to your left side or your right side, whichever is most accessible and we'll press yourself on up. And we're gonna come into tabletop pose on hands and knees. So in hands and knees, uh, on hands and knees, we wanna keep the shoulders stacked directly over the wrists. And you might even wanna sh play with shifting your shoulders a little more forward to start to put more weight into your fingertips. We you wanna spread your fingers and make sure your pointer finger is pointing forward. Knees are under the hips. We'll do a few rounds of cat and cow. So as you breathe in, let your belly sink down, lift your gaze, lift your tailbone. Exhale, tilt the tailbone down. Puff up through the back of your chest. Inhale, lift the belly sink down. Lift the chest, kind of use your hands to pull your chest forward. And exhale, tilt the tailbone down, round your spine. One more of these. Inhale, lifting the tailbone, lifting your gaze. And exhale, tilt the tailbone down. 
hug the low ribs in, really puff up through the back of the body, and you can stay here and kind of wiggle from side to side real slowly just to help open up some of the tightness we feel in our backs. We'll come down onto your forearms for dolphin pose. We'll tuck your toes, relax your head, and then lift your, your knees up away from the floor. This is really good pose for shoulder strength and it can lead to um, a couple more like advanced yoga poses like inversions, but it's also just a really good way to get your hips up high And we'll slowly lower onto the knees. We'll come back onto your hands. And we're gonna use our, our um, chair for Shavasana. So we wanna keep the chair's legs on the mat. And this is just a, like a legs up the wall kind of variation. So you'll wanna get pretty close to your chair. And then we'll kind of windmill the legs up there. And from here, you can take your legs wide and use your feet to kind of just feel the outer edges of the chair if you have a back to your chair. But we'll let your palms face up towards the ceiling. And the most important aspect about Shavasana is to let go of anything that is no longer serving you. Let go of any negative mindset that you might have towards a situation or someone. And it allows you to just come home to yourself. Connect with your body. We also want to consciously release and relax muscular tension. So we'll start by doing a few kind of awareness exercises just so we can release these areas that often are tight in our, in our body. So we'll start with the jaw, relax your jaw and let your tongue come down from the roof of your mouth. We store a lot of tension right here. And just breathe. Bring your awareness to your shoulders. Feel the shoulder blades and where they touch the floor. And just relax the whole shoulder joint. We'll bring the awareness to your legs. Really let your hips just kind of dangle and, and be. Relax your quads like the front of the thighs and the back of the thighs. Relax your knees and your ankles and your toes. Relax your fingers, your palms, and your elbows. And your eyes feel like pools of water. At this time, feel free to Pause the video and stay in this posture for as long as you want. Some teachers recommend Shavasana should be for about 10 minutes. But really however long you have the time for. And as soon as you're ready, we'll bend your knees. Roll over to your right side, or whichever side is easiest. And use your top hand to press you on up 
to a comfortable seat. We'll join your hands together in prayer. You can come up onto your chair if you would like. Thank you guys for sharing your practice. Namaste.